she's a lecturer. Well, she's retired, but she's a lecturer. Once a lecturer, always a lecturer. And um, she's Dr. Misunu Amu. She's actually the daughter of one of Ghana's icons, Ephraim Koku Amu. Good morning, Doc. How are you? Good morning. It's good to have you here. Thank you. Good so, to be here. So um, these days, since they've conferred retired, they've added retired to your name, <laughs> what, are, what, are you, what are you doing? Oh, it looks like I'm busier than I was in active wow. service. Wow, okay. Because I'm trying to put my father's, our father's music together. Mm. We want to digitize them. Okay. And they are quite a lot. Fantastic. It's, it's, it's a huge task. Okay. So that's what is keeping me it's busy. It's keeping you busy. And um, I'm also a trustee of the Ifrimamu Foundation. Okay. And, um, you know, we've been holding meetings, trying mm. to organize things here and there. Yeah. Mm. Now, how much pressure must it be? How, how, how do you feel having the weight of such a large giant of African music being your father? Um, to me, it is normal. But um, you go out and people meet you and they know you are the daughter of such a person. And, you know, the way they react towards you, it's so heartening. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it, it's a pleasure, you know, when, when, people, when people see re us exactly okay. and they relate us to him. All right. So in, 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 in tandem with, with what we are enjoying this whole week, yeah. where we have uh, some lovely drinks um, at mm -hmm. the back there, uh, Miriam is, is going to serve us some um, asana this morning, and I uh, hope you can enjoy that. Too. Yes, so, I like yeah, asana. Fantastic, mm. fantastic. All right, so let's get into the conversation um, right away. Yeah. Um, Ever Music, give us some history, if you may, um, of Ever Music. Um, first of all, let me commend you for pronouncing Ever rightly thank you thank but you. i was disappointed when a colleague mm. greeted you and you said you needed an interpreter <laughs> without that nobody would know you and not you don't speak ever <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> well here's the thing all the all my colleagues in the house they're always giving me pressure i say you're not doing it correctly you're not saying it correctly and all of those things so thank you i really appreciate that uh, you are commending me this morning for pronouncing it correctly. Thank yeah. you. So coming back to the topic, mm. um, the Eve, as you know, migrated from Ngochi. Ngochi, yeah. And um, coming down, they came with all the musical practices. They came down mm. with all the musical practices. Yeah. And as they trekked along, people settled right from Nkwanta in mm. the north. Okay right down to the South Anglo mm. area. Mm. So, um, if it stretches that far. But then we have the Northern Ever okay. and we have the Southern, southern Ever. Area. The Northern Ever right from Nkwanta to Ho area. Mm. Mm. Then the Southern along the coast, the Anglo Tongu, okay. um, Aveno, Ketu, mm. which includes the Keta, Jelukofe, and all those okay. areas, you know. And um, the musical practices are slightly different in the sense that um, the other musical practices follow the north south dichotomy, oh, which means that we have two different keys. Mm. The northern area which is referred to as Vedome amongst the mm. region, in mm. the region, uses the heptatonic scale. Okay. Do, re, mi, fa, mm. so, la, ti, do. Mm. And the southern ever uses the pentatonic ah, scale. Okay. Do, mm. re, mi, so, la. Five notes. Yes. And that's why it is pentatonic. Mm. And seven mm. notes, that's why it is heptatonic. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I so see. That's interesting. That is, that is the... That's interesting. Yeah, I know I'm a guitarist too, so I, I, I know the skills you're exactly. talking about. Exactly, so you understand what I'm yeah, saying perfectly yeah, yeah. well. That's, but that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. What would it be that influences that, though? I'm very curious to know. Um, it's, to me, 
I mean, I'm an Akan. To me, it seems um, normal or natural to go with the heptatonic. What, what is it that would influence the people to go pentatonic, though? Well, it, it may be interest. Mm. And as I said, they came along with the practices. Mm. So they, they, they chose the one they were comfortable with. Yeah. That is the way okay, I yeah, see it. With, exactly. And exactly. Yeah. So the Southern, the southern um, ever mm. found it um, easier mm. with the pentatonic. Yeah. And then the Northern ever mm. uh, heptatonic. And of course, there's a lot of Akan influence in the Northern area, yeah, you yeah, know. Well, so. Yeah. It, so it those influences would that. also influence exactly. what kind of... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, when we look at music generally, let's look at it in terms of uh, festivities, the different occasions that would require certain music. Um, what, what would you say are the natural go-to music choices of the ever people based on the different you know, occasions and events. Yeah, um, there are various musical types. Um, we have, um, you know, in the traditional setup, music and life go together. Mm. Music forms an integral part of everyday life of mm. the African. Yeah. So almost every activity goes with music. So right from... Um, when you take the life cycle, right from birth to death, mm. birth through puberty, marriage, and then death, we have musical. Uh, we have music for mm. all these various stages yeah. of life, you know. And um, if you if you take birth for ex example, you have children's music. Mm. You have cradle songs okay. that you sing for children. Like lullabies. Uh, lullabies like. Yeah. Tu, tu, bovi, tu, tu, bovi, you know. Yeah. And then there are specific um, songs for puberty rites, okay. as you know. Okay. Among the ever, we have Bewowo. That see. is a puberty okay. rite. And um, they all go through just like with the Akan, mm. in the Akan um, setup. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we have a few uh, clips of music. I want mm. us to talk through them as we look at them. All okay. right. So let's take a look at a few. Um, musical practices of the ever people. <laughs>
So mm. that, that was some music traditions. So can we just walk quickly through some of the things you remember from what we saw? What are some of the traditions you were looking at? Um, the musical types. The musical types. Um, well, they, they remind you of the early days, mm. you know, what it used to be in the early days. Okay. And um, you can see that there's a lot of innovation. And as I was um, explaining to my younger brother, mm that um, Bolo, Tutuyeme, used to be all female. Okay. They would accompany the singing with small rattles. Okay. You know, they sing and accompany themselves mm. and they will be moving, you know, their steps. Mm. And there's this other one, Avihao, Aviha. Okay. That one is a dirge performed by northern other um, women mm. at a funeral. Mm. Funeral of okay. you, mm. anybody in the community. Yeah. That one again is accompanied with this small rattle, rattle. the co mm -hmm. um, container rattle. Okay, you know. So um, and they all bring out the beauty of the music that was uh, that the beauty of the music that were performed yeah. in those days. Yeah. You know. Okay. Would you say? I mean, is it a is it a good thing or or not so good a thing when there's a fusion of you know, other uh, mu musical traditions into the original traditional of music? Of course it is good. It okay. makes it richer, mm. you know. And um, my father always said, you keep, keep your tradition, yeah. but then borrow the good ones okay. from other okay. traditions okay. to enrich yours, mm. you know. So, so it makes it more interesting. Yeah more interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of improvement. Mm. You use the old one and add some new ones mm. and, and you blend them together yeah. and it's beautiful. Fantastic. You know. So yes. share with us, is there anything else that we need to know that people who don't come from uh, Volta region traditionally would know about, sh they should know about every music? Of course, there, there, there are uh, the dances that also go with certain types of music um, and all of that, if you can just share some things with us. Well, in the traditional setup, once you mention music, it is the music, the dance, drumming, okay. singing. All of that goes together. They all go together. Okay. And um, what the, the easiest way to identify these things is by, first of all, is the language. 
that will tell you what it is. Mm. You hear the Eve and you know right away that it's an Eve yeah. music. Yeah. You know, so the music, uh, the the, um, um, the language, mm. the rhythm, the dance, the singing style. As I said, as I gave you an example of the singing style, the heptatonic yeah. and the pentatonic. Yeah. And um, then also, let me say that when the Eve you know, they were under Agokoli. Okay. And um, uh, history tells us he was a very wicked, wicked king. king. Mm. So the ever decided to Depart. flee. Yeah, exactly. Leave, leave the... So on the eve of the day, I, history again tells us that there was all night drumming mm. and dancing. Mm. You know, when they were packing their things and so on. Right through so daybreak. Okay. And um, the women tied the things in a special woven basket mm. and tied some behind them. And that is why sometimes you see this atufu okay. on their back, okay. just to depict that. Yeah. And then there was a dagger that was mm. used to break the wall. Okay. And therefore, to deceive the king, they were dancing agbaja, mm. but backwards. Oh. When the wall was broken, okay. they were dancing we were backwards, backwards, exactly. They exited. Ex exited without his knowledge. Yeah. And that's, that's, I think that that is something interesting. Yeah. And that is what is depicted during the Hogbe Chocho. Cho -cho. Mm. You know, Hogbe is um, moving. Mm. Chocho is crossing okay. over. Okay. So moving yeah. over. Hogbe to, Chocho. Mm -hmm. mm. So that is what the women depict during that time. And you see them dancing yeah. backwards with their pipes and all those things, okay. their belongings on their head yeah. and behind them, you know. It, is, it has been such a fantastic uh, a privilege having this conversation with mm -hmm. you. Um, we definitely want to know more about what you're doing with the, with the project with your father and all of that, and um, maybe you can come back and share with us, mm -hmm. you know, the developments um, uh, as they happen, and so on. And I think for us here, we are big on celebrating everything Ghanaian, you know, so definitely for, for um, Ghana, he's one of the biggest icons, you know, that we have, Yenara Assassini. By the way, that song, that song was not originally no. Yenara Assassini. No, so let me tell you. Yeah. Just this song was original, originally composed in Ewe, okay. the Peki dialect. Ameoji feingba enu onyonu fwa siye ye kpa. Ame chichi uwe kwa obo gbe fle de ta hwe nami. Edo nye kule wo chiye nu ube mi awo mi ato sinu. Nu ve ve nyanya di dodo pla me do kwi to di di blu mi azoni. Gble mi a feingba lon lon le gbe gbe. A yye kba o nyo nyo. And then, I don't know, somebody uh, translated it into, I, I mean, there's this, what they call the standard ever, yes. which then they used to sing, that is not it. Okay. This is the original one I have given you. Wow. Then two years later, he composed um, the other one whilst teaching at Akropong. Mm. And two years later, he translated it into chi. Okay. So the original is from the Ever. is from Piki Fantastic. because it was composed for school children for Empire Day celebration. Oh, In those okay. days, they used to sing these uh, the European songs yes. and so on. And yes. a teacher wanted something Think, different, yeah. Ghanaian. So that's what caused the composition of this song. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. We've been You're speaking welcome. with Dr. Misunu Amu. Uh, she's a uh, a lecturer, a retired lecturer from the African Studies Department of the University of Ghana.